Hi guys, my name is Roland. Today's video is a little bit a recap of what was going on here since the creation of the channel and we will look into the past, we will look a little bit into the future and I will also show you a few examples, make a few topics which we are talking about here today a little bit more graphic so that you can see what this is going to be about. So about two years ago I have uploaded my first video on this channel. It was initially uh, all about the introduction of my uh, AC Powerwall and then the channel kind of split it up into a few directions. Another direction was started around one year ago when I uploaded the first time a video about the inverter grounding and bonding and this kind of stuff in this direction became the most popular on my channel so it has the most views and also the most questions about it so that's why today we are also will talk a little bit about your comments first of all please let me ask you about help you can give me maybe some of you will know about YouTube, how YouTube is working and how YouTube is actually treating their creators. Final step when YouTube sees somebody who is uploading videos to, it, to the channel, to see it as a real creator is when the channel is reaching 1000 subscribers. We are now at 800, so it took immensely long, almost a year to reach 100. So the pace picked up quite significantly. It would be really great if uh, now one day we could also reach that limit of 1000 subscribers so that uh, YouTube is opening all possibilities for me to get support, etc. You might know that this channel is absolutely privately financed, right? It's me who is uh, trying to show you the content on the basis of my projects here. It's always uh, something what I am doing, what I can show you. And it should also be like that. I'm not the guy who wants to be uh, the salesman for somebody. I don't want to show you any random stuff and put my affiliate links all over the place so that people use them and I get some money out of it. That's not what I want to do. My main goal is to teach you of the topic of photovoltaics, battery storage and all around it, a little bit controlling and this kind of stuff. It does not mean that I'm absolutely do not get support. I have a few of you who are really kind in their support so who gave me a little bit of extra cash in the hand so and with this money I bought a little bit of uh, tools and stuff like that which made it easier for me to work here and for that I want to say really thank you for everybody who used my PayPal link and donated some money and you know, everybody who has questions is always free to ask them, use the comment section, also my email. I got emails from people asking me this and that and I am glad to give support and try to help you with your questions. 90% of the viewers here on the channel are not subscribed, so please, if you can and you are interested in this stuff, Please also leave your subscription and this will help me to get a little bit support of YouTube also, maybe a few bucks from that side. It will not make me rich, but in the future I can then maybe uh, get some devices, which I plan to have anyways, maybe a little bit earlier so that we can do something like that. But then we'll talk about this a little bit later, about the future, what you will see in the next months and this year. Speak about the first topic which is the playlist about inverter earthing, grounding and bonding. At the moment there's 12 videos inside of that playlist and 
it started about one year ago with the video about the DIY installations and why you should not forget about this topic grounding and neutral to ground bonding and there is a backstory of why I actually uploaded that video why I made that video and it has a little bit to do of how I got sh shocked always on that circuits right when I was doing some maintenance on my garden light let's talk about my garden lights so my garden lights are a part of my off-grid system this is my all-in-one inverter it's a 4000 watts 5000 VA inverter and this inverter is feeding my main panel it's like an essential load panel so this part is all the PV input and then I have several circuits and this one here is my garden light main uh, breaker here I have a meter I have a single pole breaker here which will then go into the next sub panel and this is this one and it will distribute into three different circuits for the garden lighting outside because I have about 50 points outside so a lot of lights which are running all over the property so that's why I split it up in three circuits then another circuit this one this is the pool pump and one feature of that light circuit is actually that it is coming straight from the output of the inverter so there is no RCD built in there and this is deliberately made like that and I will show you the reason why that is and you will immediately understand so all the light circuit is only protected by circuit breakers for short circuits and that's all leakage protection is not included there and this system for the first one and a half years around was running as an IT system so IT isolated system the grounding of this system was only equipment grounding so all the devices like inverter and then appliances which are connected here the metallic parts are grounded directly with a grounding rod only but it is not connected to the active output so that's an IT system and this was running like that for about one and a half years so isolated output of the inverter so let me show you outside at the garden lightings why that actually did not work out so well so as I said our garden lighting is a collection of around 50 lights scattered all over the property like this here some are built into walls or somewhere on the up of a wall and they are going all over the place here and following mostly the perimeter of the property and what is also following the perimeter of the property is a trench and so this trench is going all around everywhere and inside of this trench there are all my utility conduits so the yellow ones are related to electricity so there is uh, cables running to other buildings supply cables or maybe to CCTV and the blue one our ring water pipe so this is going all around the property as well as a ring line and inside these trenches there are then also the connections for the lights and these are very primitive connections because you can already see it this trench Yesterday we had a rain fall over the day are getting really wet also because these trenches also operate as dra drainages so the cables 
are connected inside the trenches but they are floating somewhere in the air so what I don't want to have here is that they are flooded but they are getting wet there is moisture all the time here probably and when you are dealing with electricity and water you have to take some precautions of course having water does not automatically mean that you that the water is shorting out something but water has some certain properties also it has a certain resistance when passing over distance so that's why here actually you cannot see it this is here either L or N and the other one is here so I'm always splitting the two wires away in the distance so when there is some leakage when this is getting uh, very wet during the rainy season there will be a certain leakage going from one place to the other but the distance is far enough so that there is a lot of resistance there uh, that this is not uh, causing any problems there right so because of this environment these cables and connections are in there's always the chance when it's getting very wet right, that there is a certain leakage automatically in the system that's the reason why there is no rcd on this part of the installation because every time during the rainy season the lights would go out somebody would have to go and reset it which would not be possible as long there is rain etc so that's of course not possible and it's also no problem because all these uh, cables and connections are safely placed it's all underneath these concrete covers but still let's say once every two years there will be one point which kind of fails right because there's some water will come into the insulation and maybe shorten out uh, some wires and then I have to do maintenance and at that time when the inverter was running as an IT device and I was uh, working on the wires I of course uh, shut down my breaker but every time when I con come into contact with a neutral wire I got zapped so I was wondering how the hell is that possible the electricity is closed and I'm getting shocked on a wire which should not even have uh, electricity on it and that is one problem of the IT system because if you have an ex extensive ins installation like this here when you have 50 lights in parallel over a long distance of wires here there will be some place where wire will come into contact with the soil and there will be a certain leakage there and this will turn the IT system into a TN system and you will be able to feel that on the wire by touching the wire because the neutral is not referenced to zero to ground because it is floating so I had voltages on my neutral at around 50 volts and this I could immediately feel just by touching the neutral wire then after about one and a half years we had a thunderstorm a lightning struck somewhere near and I got an over voltage event into the off-grid system because an IT system you can easily get an over voltage in induced into it because the power cannot go out of the system and that killed all my pool equipment all appliances which were connected to the off-grid inverter that was a big damage that time now still this was before my pool was a salt water pool but I have turned this then completely into a simple installation only based on timers and no more salt because as you know uh, these uh, salt water controllers all this equipment is extremely expensive and because it was already dead after less than two years I did not replace it with the same thing again
So after one and a half years with a lot of damage done and my lessons learned, I decided to turn the off-grid system into a TN system. So the neutral was referenced to the ground and the installation is now safe for any influence from lightning because the energy can go and be released into the earth where it belongs. That was then the reason why I uploaded the first video of the grounding series. So now I have shared my experiences so that you don't need to go through the same painful way and learn about it by yourself. That was the background story of how this particular topic started. And now, as I said, there's about 12 videos into that, inside that playlist. I know it's a lot of information inside of those 12 videos. And if you would really watch all of them, I'm sure that you know everything you need to know about it. The videos from this playlist also got the most comments, of course. And let's talk about the most common comment which is coming about this inverter grounding and neutral to ground bonding. And let's put this all under one common term. And I had to come up with this word because it does not exist in the literature like this. I call it the tech pyrophobia. What do I mean with tech pyrophobia? So phobia, the fear of something, of course, pyro comes from the word fire and tech, okay, is related to technology. So the fear of a technical device catching on fire, or we call it many times to let the magic smoke rise from something. So this is kind of uh, ex already telling everything about the comments. Most comments are related, as I said, about the fear of letting the magic smoke rise when you connect two wires behind your inverter and you maybe even push one of these as a stick into the ground. So this is the most common comment people asking about a certain inverter they have, they're telling how much voltages they are reading on each of the pins there and is it really safe to connect the neutral output to a ground source. And you know fears are healthy, right? Healthy to us humans. Fears can keep us alive, especially when it's about electricity. If someone would not be afraid of doing something wrong when handling electricity, people are killed by handling electricity the wrong way. So that's why the fear is absolutely understandable and it has to be there, of course, when we're handling electricity. But fears can be overcome by knowledge and when we know how to deal with something then we don't need to be afraid of it and we can be sure that we don't harm us or anybody else by doing something. And grounding is actually a procedure which shall make an electrical installation safer, not unsafer. And when we take the matters in our own hand and we get our own power sources, then we also have to follow these principles of making the installation safer and not unsafer. Right, as you saw in the example of the reason why I uploaded the first video, there was a risk there. And by grounding and neutral bonding, the risk was eliminated. And this is what every one of us should understand. And that's why I'm glad that people asking me 
and looking those videos and asking themselves if everything in their system is done correctly and if everything is done to increase the safety of their systems. Yeah, these comments are all about doing the right thing and they are also showing me that the people understand the matter in the first place but maybe they just need some extra assurance that this can all be done and it is correct what they are doing. So let me show you really quickly on a piece of paper why neutral to ground bonding and grounding is nothing what harms an inverter. The only thing what can harm the inverter is by not doing it correct. Here we have our inverter and we have our three wires out. So this is a one phase inverter could be a 230 volt inverter, it could be also a 120 volt inverter for the United States and we have an output for L, we have N and we have a PE. There could be screw terminals here but it could also be already an outlet. If it's an outlet chances are that we even do not know which one of these is the L and which is the N and it actually does not matter because the inverter in the basic configuration is an isolated power source so we have our active circuit here which is normally not connected to anything else so we have an isolated output L and N. Why do we need to ground and make a neutral to gr ground bonding? We know our electrical installation here. On this side we do have a safety procedure there. Grounding as an extra circuit for the electricity. We need in the case of a ground fold electricity which comes back on the PE wire on the grounding wire return to the active site so that then at the end some safety procedures some safety devices can turn off our power source. This happens now with our neutral to ground bond which I will place here now. So we can now see that if there is electricity coming from our active site our L somewhere via a fold to our PE side the current can return via our bond to the active side again on the neutral to our inverter and the circuit is then closed and the inverter will shut down through our overcurrent protection or we have maybe some breakers in RCD whatever so this gives us the chance that protective devices can be engaged. So the only thing a bonding, neutral to ground bonding is doing to the inverter is that it is adding an initially unactive part of our installation to the active part of the installation. So there's nothing normally going on there and nothing would go on there uh, what, what's not already going on on the active side. So having a ground fold which goes from here to here having a sh short circuit there is not different than we would have a short circuit between L and N already. So all this is already taken care by the inverters over current protection. So there is no extra risk added by doing a neutral to ground bonding. Does now anything change in the case that we have now added a ground source to this? No, there is no extra risk. Because if there is now a leakage from our L ground by some reason, then I have just another 
circuit created which goes over ground. But it is still not different than when I would have a direct short circuit via on the active side. So this will actually have even a higher resistance than a direct short of course. So absolutely no reason why there would be a magic smoke coming out of the inverter. Okay, so what would be now a risk? Let's say you have bought an inverter and you heard about uh, grounding, neutral to ground bonding and this kind of stuff. But what you did not do, you did not make sure if your inverter already comes with an internal bond. So let's say you have an, an inverter where the manufacturer already have an internal neutral to ground bond. This is done more and more now these days by the manufacturers because they want you to have a safe system in the case you are installing an off-grid system. Right, so they are adding by default already a neutral to ground bond inside the inverter so that at least most of the people can already have a safe system if they connect an appliance there which requires grounding. We have now an internally bonded inverter here but we don't know it. Right? We did not take a multimeter, we did not check if there is contingency between those terminals here. So what happens if we now decide to make an external neutral to ground bond because we are not aware of the internal one. So this could be now an inverter which only has an outlet and we don't know exactly what is L and what is N. We have a 50-50 chance that by some random incident we are placing an outside bond between L and ground. Right? What have we created now? We have now created a short circuit. Right? So the current will go out from here, go via the external bond to ground and come back here via the internal bond to our active neutral again. So we have now created a nice short circuit directly at the inverter. Still, this does not mean that the inverter will blow up. It will have to protect itself as before via its uh, overcurrent protection. Making such a mistake that you really release the magic smoke, it will only happen if the device is maybe so cheap and so poorly designed that it just cannot handle a short circuit and it might really get some smoke out of somewhere. So don't be afraid, you know now what you are dealing with. Just be aware what you are dealing with with your device. If there is an existing neutral to ground bond, then of course you have to deal with it differently. Or in the case when that bond is actually should not be there, as we have talked about in one of the last videos about the TT earthing system, that you have to really remove the internal bond. Let's talk about the future a little bit. Now it is middle of May and this is the time when here in Thailand, here at our place, the high season is over. High season went quite well for us. I'm really satisfied. We are still uh, surviving. The country seems to fully open soon. But nevertheless, the next four months here are a low season. There's not many guests. And this is always the time for my annual visit to Austria. So my parents, they are old. 
they have uh, apricot and walnut plantations there and they need some help and I will now in the middle of July move again to Austria and help my parents during the summer the job market in Austria of course is also the best time I will also have a full-time job and the third thing I will do and this is related again to the channel is as you saw last year I did the installation at the house of my brother-in-law and my sister and this year they are going to install a solar system and it will be a solar system as everybody has it on mind so everybody wants to save on its electricity bill you know Europe this year the energy prices as in many other western parts of the world have skyrocketed in Europe they also have the issue with the Ukraine Russia war and you know uh, then there will be really a lack of natural gas electricity the prices will just go up so they asked me to tell them what they can do to reduce the electricity bill and the second request of course as everybody at the moment has it everybody wants to be self-sufficient in the case of a blackout and it will be a classic example of how you can do that if you live somewhere in a town in a village you have your house on a low budget of course so on my channel we are typically doing projects on a low budget because if money is no issue then you can do whatever you want anyways but I want to show people who don't have so much money how they can still get their own electricity from their roofs store them into battery storage and feed them back into the house on an affordable way right? when I'm back then in Thailand again by the end of the year I want to then of course have again my own project here I don't know if we can do more on the front of uh, battery storage of what I what we are going to do maybe optimize a little bit on the supply side get a few uh, extensions on the solar ports we will see that but uh, one project I have is I want to hack a variable output charger and control it with my controller in the power wall so this uh, will be maybe interesting again for somebody who wants to try something like this that will be a 25 amp 48 volt charger which I want to control really from the outside based on um, data of excess energy right it was a little bit a view into the past a little bit a view into the future thank you for watching all my videos not only this one today as I said before please subscribe so let us make the 1000 of course like the video as always and I see you next time